Alright guys and gals, this is a long plane review for Hypernoid Zero on the Amstrad CPC, a brand new Amstrad CPC game released on the 31st of March at the Revision 2024 demo party where it ranked third overall in the game dev category which is no mean feat given it was up against Amiga and PC games. It was also an Amstrad Demo Ghost Knob that won first place in the old school demo category too. So a good time for the Amstrad scene definitely. Revision happens every year and it's quite a prestigious event. And the game we're looking at today, Hypernoid Zero, was entered in with no one having any clue about it beforehand apart from those involved in making it. So it was quite a shock and a lovely surprise. And it was with much excitement when I first booted this up, for more reasons, because it was a very welcome return for a scene legend, Axelé, and the Bitplane Technomantes team. Oh, oh that's nice. That was nice. Uh, more on Axelé in a little bit, as we're just booting this up. Loading in Hypernoid Zero. And here we are on the title screen. Oh, some lovely music playing. And we're going to listen to this in full and uh, have a couple, of, a few loops of it as we just talk about a few things. Oh, that's a lovely tune. I love the Hypernoid font. And note it's version 0. There may be some updates coming to this at some point in the future, potentially. And there's an option there for a number of lives. 3, 5 or 7. Uh, lots of different control options. 3 button joystick. Mmm. Loot value. I'm going to go on high loot value for this. Um, enemy fire, we're going to keep as standard. So, high loot value just means. Um, okay. I'm going to keep it as high loot value because it will take us less time to get through the game. I'll explain why as we play through it in a little bit. Anyway, so we talked about Axelé a second ago, the coder. Um, this is the first proper game from him in nearly eight years. His name is Paul Kuistra, aka Axley. The last one being Dragon Attack in the 2016 CPC Retro Dev. But perhaps you'll know him best for the awesome Relentless and Super Edge Grinder. There's also Star Saber, Sub Hunter, Dead on Time, Mega Blasters Escape from Castle in the Clouds, which is the sequel to 1994's Mega Blasters, one of my favourite ever Amstrad games, like Bomber Bomberman Clone, and or hopefully, eventually Corsair, which had a one level teaser released in 2020. Uh, we also have Harris Cladis, aka Rex Beng, on graphics of his stunningly unique graphical style. He's been involved with nearly all the games I just mentioned, along with dozens of demos, including that Ghost Knock one that won at Revision. And of course, we have Herve Monchatra, aka Tom at Jerry, on music which is always amazing. You can find these tunes across dozens of games, demos, crack throws, but again, probably most famous on the scene on Axelay's games are just not well mentioned. But before we get into this game, it should be noted this takes a very heavy influence from Raphael Secco's Cybernoid 1 and 2. This might as well have been called Cybernoid 3, to be honest. Well, hence the name being Hypernoid, yes. It's a fair bit more intense, with a bigger production, uh, an in-game shop to buy weapons, different routes in the game, a boss to fight at the end, and even secrets to find. You'll see as we start things up in just a second. And here we go. So this is going to load up a little mission briefing section. There we go. So, what are we dealing with? 
According to the database and scanner readings, navigating should be relatively straightforward. However, there are areas where our radars cannot reach. It is possible there are fortified zones, so you might have to find your own way in. How cautious should I be? The usual automated defences are active, though we do not anticipate there will be a problem for you. Nevertheless, stay alert for supplies. Once you reach the end of the route, we will utilise your vessel's relay for a more thorough scan. Got it. Have a warm coffee waiting for me. Press any key. Uh, at the top middle there, you can actually see a mini map of the area you're about to uh, reach and approach. So, yeah. Um, there's actually a hidden second route, though. Mm. And watch out for the end there. There's an upper and lower section. Right. Um, okay, so off we go. And look at that. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Quickly get through the first section there. And there's a hidden little area to your left there with a little purple pickup. Uh, that pickup is can be is randomized, can be different every time. The purple pickup there gives you credits. As you can see I've got like $70 worth or 70 credits if you look at the top right corner of the screen. Just above that is your score, which is at 260. More on credits there in, in a little bit. You want to get through the screen as quickly as possible because the enemies keep coming and spawning from the bottom right. We've got a train. I call it the train going around the screen just like the train in like a cybernoid. An electric gates to pass through there. And turrets shooting constantly. Here we're going to use our secondary weapon for the first time. The bouncing bombs. Look at the explosions. And uh, bullets filling up the screen there. Now, these enemies here, if you shoot them, they will randomly drop um, credits for you to pick up. Oh look, the little, little Amstrad 3 inch discs! How cute is that? That's cool. And here, we're going to take some time to uh, shoot these enemies and pick up, pick up the discs they drop to build up our credits. We'll get to about maybe five, six hundred um, dollars worth or pounds worth of credits which we can spend in an armory shop later in the game. Now, um, there's no time limit. The time feature hasn't been implemented yet. Hence the name Hypernoid Zero, this is version zero of the game, which implies there may be an updated version of this game later on at some point. And I, I guess they'll call this Hypernoid without the zero after the name. Um, the time thingy is that little sort of um, st pyramid structure line thing um, to the left of the score and the um, credits we're building up at the top of the screen in the heads up display. It says in the manual time hasn't been implemented yet. So we could just sit here, we can basically use this screen to spam getting credits. There we go, we've got 735 credits. Now, we can go to the right here. This is one route you can go through the game, but there's a hidden area at the bottom here. If you use your first weapon, the missiles, you can go down here and go to the lower route. Ah, secret secrets. So, in Hypernoid, you have four different weapons. Actually, the fourth one isn't actually a weapon, it's a shield. So, if you, in your heads-up display at the top of the screen, um, well, first of all, to the left is the number of lives you've got, top left corner. We started with seven lives. We're going to do this in one life anyway, so no point in me selecting seven lives. Uh, but to the right of that is your four weapons. First weapon is your missiles, which you can fire upwards or downwards. I, I fired them downwards to uh, expose the uh, entrance to the secret area. That's the secret I've just used, the third weapon. Um, and uh, I use the bouncing bombs a lot, which is the second weapon, which is, which I, which is now currently selected. And um, because we went this secret route, we've now got the uh, spinning satellite thing around our ship. There we go. Um, so, fire button one to shoot your normal laser weapon, fire button two to activate your um, selected weapon, secondary weapon, or, well, if you've selected number four there, it's the shield, which we'll utilise later. Now, if you've got three fire buttons, 
fr fr the, fr the fr free fire button mode selected on the menu, the third fire button basically pushes your weapon selection to the right. So, if you've got a joystick compat uh, co basically capable of, uh, well, you've got joystick and free fire buttons, um, well, then you're in luck. <laughs> now, here's a, if you shoot the switch here, it turns that gate to the right there. I'm using the shield there to get through. See those arrows? It, turn, it pushes them to the right. Okay, that's how you get through that screen. Um, base, oh, uh, point to note there, um, free fire buttons doesn't work on uh, Amstrad Plus systems and the GX4000. So that will only, the free fire buttons only work on the normal CPC machines. Use a seeker there to get rid of that last one. Don't wait, don't waste too much of your bouncing bombs. Oh, there's a purple pickup there that increases your number of credits. That one there increases your, uh, I think that was your, oh, that's a rear gun. That's a rear gun pickup. If it's got a straight line through the middle. Oh, there's the armory. Push down there. Uh, that item there um, gets is a satellite. We want to get all the satellites. There we get two satellites and we want to get them fully upgraded. Uh, I think there's like four upgrade levels on the satellites. And look at that. With them fully upgraded, both, um, both satellites could shoot um, shoot at the same time as well. Um, at a higher fire rate as well. That's an ammo pickup there. If it's got two lines, it's an ammo pickup. Um, I think that pickup there, top right, is a score pickup. And that's another score pickup, which we don't want. Now, this screen you can also utilise to farm um, pickups. That red one is a time pickup, but unfortunately the time feature hasn't been um, implemented. So yeah, that's an a that's oh, that one there is always an ammo pickup, but the rest of the pickups in this room are randomised. Sadly, that's a that's a uh, that's a um, score pickup. What we want is a purple pickup to get our rest of our. Oh, there's a purple pickup. Excellent. That gives us credits. That's why I've selected high, um, high loot value on the uh, menu screen for this playthrough and long play. Otherwise, farming for this would take a long time, and the long play would be would take much longer. So it's more of a time saver rather than me making it easier for myself. It, so, yeah. Oh, excellent! There's a purple one there. That may be enough actually to take us yet yeah, back to the armory. And we can get the rest of our ammo restocked here, because I think we're fully upgraded on our ship. Yeah. Um, so, I think we just need some ammo for our first weapon, the missiles. And that should be all our ammo we need. I think we just need to, we can move on now. Um, but I think I didn't realise on my long play here, actually. Um... Because it looks like there's like slots for more weapons on the weapons two, three, and I, did, and I was thinking, oh, I need more ammo. Because it looks like they're not full. Um, and I, <laughs> I did realise, oh, yeah, weapon two is full, even though there's like three slots left. That's the that maximum amount of ammo you can get for that one. Same, I think the same for weapon three there, which is the seeker. It can, it can only have one shield as well. It's a bit misleading. There's, it looks like there's like space for more ammo, and you can't get any more. So I should have moved on here. And look, if I go here, I'm just testing here, getting more weapons. You can't get any more for that one or that one. But yes, weapon one, the the, the little missiles. You can, yeah, that's now fully stocked up, so I can move on. Um, gotta love the graphics here. Rex Bang, wow, what an artist! I love his graphical style. How he uses like how he uses like lines and blends the wonderful because um, the Amstrad has all these like wonderful uh, mix uh, mixture of blues and then of course the purples and the Amstrad's color palette and he blends them so well together 
and his unique style, like these lines he uses, is excellent. Oh, this is a really tough screen actually, you can really muck up here. So you have to shoot the switch to change the direction of those arrows, it's like a conveyor belt, you actually get pushed along. So you can drop down very, very carefully, time this perfectly, shoot those blocks or balls out the way quickly, select, select the missiles to blow away the bottom ones, and then hide away at the bottom there. Because you've got a turret there, bottom left corner, shooting out all those uh, brown balls at you. I use a seeker here to uh, shoot that thing away. You can only blow it up when it's when it's like mouth is open, shooting those brown balls at you. Otherwise, it's protected. So again, you've got to time that. And this whole room, you've got to time perfectly. Shoot the switch bottom left corner, and it, it changes the direction of those arrows to, to pointing left permanently. And then you've got to get through uh, between those two um, uh, moving blocks perfectly and few because if you die and lose a life you've lost all those upgrades <laughs> you spent all that time getting and I think you've got at least oh yeah you got one more room to get through above to open up that gate to the top right there that is your exit from the from this level so we've got to get this we've got to do this this room and the top room without dying. And what about the what about the music and sound effects as well by uh, Tom at Jerry? <laughs> oh yeah, shoot the switch here, which is hidden behind those blocks to change the direction of those that laser gate. Select number three, the seeker, and we're gonna have to blow away that turret there. There we go. I think that's a, a, a ammo pickup there. To re replenish our seeker missiles and shoot the gate bottom left corner there and that opens up the gate to the exit in the room below there you go it's now open watch out though there's a turret right below us as we enter this room what am I doing? Wait, waiting around it. I don't know. I was thinking maybe I should go back and get some more ammo, but like, no, don't be silly. Just go. Go, Zypho. Just get out. And we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> huh, guys? Are you still around? Mission briefing time. We are still here. We lost you for a second. HQ detected a powerful explosion that disrupted our communication. Your vessel appears unaffected, showing clear readings on all indicators. Our sensors registered a forceful energy release originating from lower strata outside the complex premises. All security systems appear to be offline, but we were able to track notable disturbances from the explosion site. Following the path from your arrival, however, we have lost monitoring capability of the complex entirely. The entrance has collapsed. You will need to find alternative exit routes. Be careful, we are not aware if emergency defences have been deployed. And we have no idea about the nature of those disturbances. And we don't see a mini-map at the top there anymore. Hmm, okay. So, let's find out. The last section. And we're back in from where we were, but now everything is all messed up. What's going on? There was the room we were just in before as well. Everything is all blown up and all scrambled. So, so let's have a little explore around. Now you can go through the room to the right and go straight to the, to the final boss. But if you want, you can go down here and have a little explore and pick up some items if you want to. You can ignore all this and go straight to the boss if you want to, but no. Because this is a long play, we're going to explore all the rooms. We don't have to, but because, um, I don't know, I'm an idiot and I want to show you all, everything in the game, I'm going to show you this. Which is, which is making it like ten times harder <laughs> than it needs to be, but yeah. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you it anyway. No, I'm gonna pick up all the items as well. That was a satel satellite pickup, but we've got all of them anyway. Ammo pickup here, if you want it. There we go. But yeah, very nicely presented. So this is an area of the uh, 
space station that we haven't seen before, which is now open to us. Just being very careful here. Oh, this music is fantastic, isn't it? And what absolutely stunning coding. I mean, uh, everything looks to be moving around at like 50 frames per second or 25 frames per second. Love the blinking light in the background there, that's nice. Uh, I've not found any extra other hidden secrets. Uh, there is an area here to explore to the left, which is looks like it's kind of new. It looks like it's all collapsed in on itself. Uh, there is a rear gun pickup here behind a laser. The only way to get it is to use your shield pickup to pick it up. So I've wasted my shield pickup to get it, but I didn't need it. I'm just picking it up for completionist's sakes or whatever. So I don't have a shield now to use in the final boss, but we won't need it. Anyway, so you could have just gone right straight away. And here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and everyone, is the final boss. You have to shoot away at each of its extremities and the little white and red blobs. And then there's a flashing blinking thing at the end there. You have to shoot it. There's two of them. And you have to destroy them. Get ready with your seeker missiles. I use um, bouncing bombs to help us out at this bit. And get ready with your seeker missile. There you go. There's one done. So get ready. Select the uh, second weapon ready. I use it now. Press free with your seeker. And now. Use your seeker now. Now the middle one to destroy. Getting close. Get your seeker ready. Get ready to fire it when he flashes. Be any second now. Now. And there you go. There's a fight. There's the boss done. And you've beaten Hypernoid Zero. You have reached the end of Hypernoid Zero, created by Bitplane Technomantis for the Revision 2024 Game Competition. The code was written by Axel A, pixels pushed by Rex Beng, music composed by Tom and Jerry. A special thanks to Tom's for assisting with the intro. Warm regards to everyone at Revision and to all those who release games and demos on our beloved retro 8-bit platforms. Yes, I agreed. A special shout out to all those individuals who inundate the world with fake previews and trailers. Woohoo. Huh? Um, 1984 to 2024, celebrating 40 years of Amstrad CPC. Yes, they're yeah, excellent. Um, well, I don't know what that special shout out and fake previews and trailers message thing was meant to mean and be all about, really, and how it's meant to be intended and taken. I think and assume it's meant to be a light hearted jibe at a certain racing game that's been hyped for a long time, maybe. Otherwise, I'm clueless and what else are we uh, supposed to think? I know that it's at least made some people puzzled and a little bit at the least um, uncomfortable, but I can't speak for them. All I'll say is, is that I'm all about promoting new Amstrad games and exposing and pushing them to as wider audience as possible. And I don't think there's any shame in wanting eyeballs on your products that you've worked many, many hours in your free time for nothing. I'm also about helping and keeping a positive and friendly Amstrad scene and community working together so that we see even more new Amstrad productions. And I don't know if this is in the spirit of that or not, but I'll leave that there and just take that as a silly joke. Uh, but maybe next time, lads, Keep it out of games and leave it for the demos of silly scroller messages. Gamers are a different audience. But, yeah, let's leave that there. Go back to more positive things. Hypernoid Zero. What a game. What a fantastic, brilliant production in all areas. Absolutely beautiful graphics from Rex Bang. The music and sound effects are absolutely fantastic. And... Just first rate coding from Axley. Um, it's as smooth as a hot knife through butter. 
and just so much going on on the screen and so much to do as well. Um, it's the cyber, the third Cybernoid game, but just over the top and brilliant. So well done to all those involved. I'm not going to critique this in any way, shape, or form. I don't on new homebrew games because I don't want to put anyone off making new games. The only critique I would have, though, if I did, well, I'm going to say it anyway, is I wish there was more. I want more. <laughs> And I can't wait for the next production from the Technomantis team. So there we go. Thank you ever so much everyone for watching. And thank you Axelay, Rex Rexbeng, Tom and Jerry and Toms for a wonderful, fantastic production. This is contender for Game of the Year already. So thanks for watching and see you all again very soon. Goodbye. Bye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.